Alliance. Lung Cancer Alliance is a nonprofit patient advocacy organization that's dedicated to empowering those who are living with or at risk for lung cancer. Um, we, our main goals are to increase survival, improve quality of life, and to reduce stigma around the disease. Lung Cancer Alliance has a unique research portfolio in that we don't consider ourselves a research funder, we consider ourselves a research catalyst. We are trying to get into, involved into projects and to really take them to the next level by contributing our staff expertise, by contributing the patient perspective and bringing patients to the research. Research in lung cancer has been exploding over the past couple of years. It's been an amazing time to be in this field. Um, what we've seen is in the past, just since 2015, we've seen more than 20 FDA approvals that are related to lung cancer. We've seen more than 10 new drugs come to the market. It's been a really exciting time, both from a scientific perspective and from a patient perspective, because now there's so many more choices. There's many new drugs um, and many different options that are available for patients. So that being said, it's with so many new drugs available, it can be confusing for patients to figure out which path they should go on, which trial they should go on, and what type of treatments they should be looking at. So, so it's a really important time both for research but also for patient education, and that's where we feel we can come in to bridge the gap. So we're really excited about the promise of research in two different areas in lung cancer. The first is around early detection. We now have low-dose CT screening as an approved early detection method, which was a huge advance for our field. But there's also really new technologies that people are currently studying that could improve that technology even further. So we're excited about the possibility of finding lung cancer and being able to treat it earlier. At the same time, we're really excited about the pipelines of new therapeutics that are coming onto the market. We've seen advances in a couple of different scientific areas, both targeted therapies as well as immunotherapies in the past couple of years, and there's many, many more um, new therapeutics and new combinations to follow. So we're really excited to see what happens in this field and to really learn how to use the new drugs and the ones that are coming to fruition in the right way and making sure that the, each patient gets the right treatment for them at the right time. We believe that all patients should really consider participating in research and that it's a conversation that they should have with their treatment team as early as possible within the course of treatment. There's many different ways to get into research. I think people often believe that clinical trials are for patients that it's really the last resort, that it, they've been through a number of treatments and there's nothing left except a clinical trial. Really, there's a lot of clinical trials out there, both for early stage patients as well as new therapies. It's something that really should be brought into treatment discussions early, um, and we encourage pa all patients to ask their doctors about it and start having that discussion. We talk to patients every day um, on our helpline, through our social media channels. There's so many patient stories that are inspirational and that are really letting us see how research is coming into the community. I had a group of patients at our National Advocacy Summit last year where one of them had been on multiple different clinical trials of brand new cutting edge agents, one of which got approved while she was on it. Another patient in my group had had some of the newer liquid biopsy technology that allowed her to go on a new therapeutic. So we're seeing many, many examples of patients where the advances in research are really making a difference in their care and really improving their outcomes. One of the ways that we're involving patients in research is through our website and our partner and our wonderful partnership with Antidote. We have an online clinical trial matching widget both on our website and our social media channels that allow patients to answer really easy patient friendly questions to help them find the trials that are most appropriate and right for them. Then they can take those trials to their treatment team to discuss as potential options. We know that not everyone is online, and so we also have in-house clinical trial navigators that can answer questions online. Those who did the online widget can also call with questions and talk to our navigators. Um, and we really feel that the combination then allows us to really reach more people and help everyone be able to pinpoint what trials might be the right options for them.
In addition, we often are promoting research studies, both survey-based as well as patient data sharing type studies where patients can contribute to research projects in a way that allows them to give back to the community to use their experience, their data, and what they've found to really move research forward and to be able to make a difference. We find that patients are generally really excited to participate in research and really want to give back to the community. So we created the Lung Match program really to combine clinical research and patient support. The overall goal of the Lung Match program is to make sure that all patients are getting the right treatment for them at the right time. It's really a precision medicine type program where we want to understand individual patients, where they are in their treatment journey and what the right potential either standard of care medicines or clinical trials might be for them at that moment in time to treat their current situation. So Lung Match is composed of multiple parts. It has both clinical trial matching components as well as molecular testing component. That allows us to really broaden the program and make sure we have enough information about each patient to make sure that they're getting the right treatment options. So we're really excited to be presenting some of our preliminary findings about lung match at the World Conference on Lung Cancer in Yokohama, Japan. So what we've done is we've looked at data from the first nine months of the program since we rolled it out late in 2016. We identified that there still are a number of barriers to clinical trial enrollment. Sometimes the clinical trial information that's out there is not correct and the trial is not even open or not open at that particular site. We find that patients still have trouble with transportation to trials to be able to travel and many of the logistical and cost issues around clinical trials. Um, and there's many different things that as a community we can learn from following patients as they try to enroll in trials and really improving their experience so that we can make sure that patients can get on trials where, when they need to. We see a huge increase in the number of discussions that are taking place between patients and their treatment team after talking to our navigators. We think because patients feel more educated and more empowered to have those conversations. In addition, we're seeing a huge increase in the number of patients who are actually looking for trials on our site. Since we launched Lung Match, we've seen 10 times as many patients complete a clinical trial search on our website. We're thrilled with those results because it means that patients are getting the clinical trial information that they need to be able to take back to their doctors and talk about potential options. The most important finding from the molecular testing piece of the Lung Match program was that more than 80% of the patients who completed the molecular testing had an actionable finding. So this means that there was a gene or protein change within their cancer that led to a recommendation for a certain type of therapy. We're really excited about that because it's critical for patients to get the right care for them at the right time. And we're really starting to show that this molecular testing can make an actionable difference for patients. So it's still early for the Lung Match program. It's only been nine months, but what we're seeing with this early data is that we really are able to bring these advances to patients. With the combination of appropriate molecular testing as well as clinical trial matching and making sure we can find the right trials for the right patients, we're able to really impact their care in a very positive way and help make sure that everyone gets the right treatment path for them. So what we've shown in the last nine months with Lung Match is that we can put infrastructure in place to really be able to improve patient care by working with partners in this field. By having partners like Antidote who bring valuable services and really are aligned with the mission of improving care for lung cancer patients, we can really work all together to move the field forward. What's next in lung cancer research? We're seeing that with all of these new therapies on the market, the next big thing is combinations. How do we use these new treatments? We don't understand whether you should give one treatment before another or give them together. There's targeted therapies, immunotherapies. Should we be combining them? Should we be combining different classes of immunotherapies? There's so many questions still to answer. 
it's really exciting because there's a lot of potential to really make significant differences that could increase survival and improve quality of life for patients. But we really need continued research to be able to do that. That's why patient participation in clinical trials is so important and why programs like this can really help move the research infrastructure forward. Also, although it's a buzzword to hear about precision medicine and personalized medicine, that really is the way of the future. We're really trying to understand what new therapies are right for which patients, and we need more research into markers than biomarkers and molecular markers that will show which drug is right at the right time. So now with the data from the first nine months, we've shown that lung match can make a positive difference. The next phase is really to expand it much more broadly and to make sure that patients everywhere have access to this type of service. What we really want to do is focus on patients in more rural communities, patients who might not have precision medicine services right down the street from them, and make sure that everyone can have access to things like molecular testing and clinical trials. We want LungMatch to help bring this to all patients everywhere. To learn more about LungMatch or to enroll, go to www.lungmatch.org or call 1-800-298-2436.